symptoms of so much nervous illness are no more than the symptoms of stress exaggerated by sensitization. And now you might well ask, then what is the difference between sensitization and nervous illness? When do we say a person is sensitized and when do we say he is nervously ill? We say a person is nervously ill when he stays sensitized and lets this interfere with his normal way of living. And now you might well ask, what keeps him sensitized all this time? And this is a very good question, because it brings us face to face with the last two of those three culprits, bewilderment and fear. Face to face with bewilderment and fear. It is bewilderment and fear that keeps sensitization alive. Bewilderment works by keeping a sensitized person constantly under the strain of asking himself, why am I like this? What is this thing that is happening to me? Why can't I be my old self? He looks at others and thinks, why can't I be like them? And if he finds no answer to his questions, fear comes into the picture. Fear of the state he is in. So the stress of bewilderment and the stress of fear are added to the stress of sensitization. Stress continually being added to stress. And so sensitization is kept alive. By adding bewilderment and fear, a sensitized person puts himself into a cycle of fear, adrenaline, fear. First, fear of sensitization, that is fear of the exaggerated symptoms of stress, produces adrenaline. And then this adrenaline, continues to produce the very symptoms of stress that he fears. So the cycle goes on. Fear, adrenaline, fear. After having been tricked into nervous illness by those three bogeymen, sensitization, bewilderment and fear. And believe me, it takes no great personality defect to become suddenly or gradually sensitized and then to be bewildered and afraid of the strange symptoms, the strange experiences that sensitization brings. 